Hello everyone, welcome to Flyout. This is an early access aircraft designer and simulator that was released to Steam about two weeks ago. It is fairly early access, so it has a warning that says, keep in mind that this is early access basically. To summarize, in short, there will be bugs and uh, you know everything is gonna change and stuff like that. Let's just quickly go through the settings. We have things on high settings. There is a potential unlimited for view distance and ultra and shadow quality, but I'm not going whole hog on the atmospheric scattering or anything. We'll just keep it to high for now. And uh, though I don't think we'll have any sort of issues as far as performance is concerned. Uh, simulation, there's some uh, physics update rate and gearbox steps I don't know about. Um, now I have set up, I have tried to fly a plane already. I've already used a designer and everything. So I've spent some time with it. Uh, I set up my joystick. The joystick doesn't get red. Uh, so for some reason I can like uh, tell it to, uh, it sees the pitch when I put this input in, but when I try to fly the plane, it doesn't seem to actually work. Um, it, it When we go into the flight mode, you'll see that there is sort of a indicator of whether the pitch and roll are being actuated or not, this little diagram there. And uh, it's not by my joystick. So. Uh, I have to use the keys, the um, W, S, A, and D, and Q, and E in order to control the plane, though my throttle works. This is like the reverse of what I'm used to uh, every now and again with Kerbal Space Program. My throttle doesn't work, uh, but the joystick pretty much always works. I mean, it really does always work, uh, but now it's reversed. The throttle works, but the joystick doesn't. Go figure. Anyway, so yeah, peculiarity there, but we'll figure that out. Well, I'll uh, I'll show you what I've got so far, and they have a few stock craft available here. So this is why I designed and I have test flown. I actually wanted to do a V-tail, but the actuation was a little bit weird, so I decided to just go a little bit more conventional. I was trying for a Cirrus SR-22 business jet kind of thing, and eh, it wasn't working out. So the question is, how do we uh, make a plane li like this or like what, however you like it? Uh, so then we will uh, get a new aircraft. So you start out with a cockpit like this. And right now we only have this kind of cockpit. And uh, this potentially might have, oh, there's another cockpit. No, let's not do that. But anyway, uh, then there's the fuselage and we have some uh, cockpit. I, I don't know, it calls this a cockpit, but then this fuselage it says cockpit, but it's the surrounding portion as you can see. So there's an airliner cockpit, a bomber cockpit that's similar to a B-29. And to delete, uh, you can't press delete. So there's two things that uh, I'm a little bit frustrated with so far. And that's that you can't press delete. Uh, you go down here and go to that red icon and it deletes. Uh, and the other thing is undoing. Uh, control Z doesn't undo and I have no idea how to undo things. So uh, this they might be hotkey, but I haven't found it yet. So uh, here are the cockpit, uh, the controls for moving things around are uh, what you would expect basically from Blender. Uh, they're sort of like Blender controls. And in fact, if you want to go into it's like a detailed editing mode, it's tab, which is the same as what you would use in Blender to go to edit a mesh. Now here we've got two cockpits because we've got symmetry here. So we don't want that. Now to pick this up, you know, I can't click on it and pick it up. You have to click this to pick it up. And then click that. I don't know if there's a hotkey to change the symmetry, but I just use that. And then uh, to center on X, you hold down X, and then it'll snap to X, like that. Uh, but you have to be close enough to it. And to pick it up again, maybe there's a hotkey to pick it up again. Align to surface is S. I'm not too sure exactly what that does, but uh, but you can also center on Y and Z. So that centers on Y and that centers on Z. But I'm going to hold down X. That's the one. We don't want it going off side to side here. And, but we do want it moved like that. So now we only have one and there's various snapping things. Uh, angle snap is here. And then to change between the disk gizmo and rotation, you just click that. And then this is scaling. So you can scale it down and you can scale it down. We can make it flat like that. That's sort of funny, isn't it? Uh, but that's, Nice. That's one thing that you can't really do very easily in some of the other things like Kerbal Space Program, certainly. 
Uh, it doesn't make it that easy for you. And so it's nice to have these gizmos like that. And But it gets even better, actually. Well, this isn't much of a view to look out of, but let's just go with it for now. This is just a demonstration. And so to add another part, this is the hierarchy. And then to add another part, you go here, and then you get, let's say, a fuselage. Seems reasonable. Now it says hold left shift by uh, while placing to match cross section. So let's do that. It matches that cross section. And uh, so in order to go into the fuselage editor, we press tab, like I said. And uh, here, number one, you can see here is like this. So actually, I, I would like to sort of match those, but I don't know. Let's see. Oh, uh, we, we've got the scaling here. I wonder if we can copy. Paste. No, that doesn't work. Uh, there, are, there are presets. In fact, I created a preset called Thin Top like this. And so we can paste uh, that preset and then apply, and then it goes like this. So this is a very nice thing. You can uh, mirror X and then tweak it like and make your whatever shape you want. And this makes it easier to make like an SR71 fuselage. You know, you'd pull these out like that. I'm not going to do it, but uh, you get the picture. You can actually, this is one thing I've really wanted in an aircraft designer. And it is present in uh, X-Plane's uh, Plane Maker. The problem with X-Plane's Plane Maker is it's not built into the game exactly. It's its, its own executable and then it's a little bit more of a uh, hassle to use it than I would like. But uh, th that is probably the best plane maker I've seen so far in terms of its usability. Uh, I haven't tried making a plane for flight sim yet, but I imagine that's more complicated. Anyway, this is probably not what I want. And here I would really like to control Z, but uh, clear assign materials. Let's see. You can assign material to things and this class and hole. Uh, click faces on the fuselage. Okay, so let's say, okay, so that becomes glass then. And so if you really wanted to make windows, what you should do is extrude each of these individual. Uh oh, it's gone. That, that's not one I want. I wanted zero. <laughs> okay, let's not do Z fighting here. Okay, so now we've got one and zero. Now, if we really want to make windows, let's go to assign materials and then there we go. That's a window. So uh, you just keep extruding little bits and then create little glass sections like that. Or you could create a hole, stop assigning materials, uh, tab to quit out of it quickly, and we'll pick it up. Uh, I hope that there's probably a hockey for it. And there's little hockeys uh, down here that we can use, but okay. But let's say we get a new one, plus, and then fuselage, show left shift. and. Uh, so far, I, I'm sure there's a better way of doing it, but tab, and I don't want to do that. What I want to do is copy this cross section from one, and I'm just going to do control C. Control Z for undo doesn't work, but control C to copy this number does. So then we go control C and I press that, and that will change it. And if I go back to number one and copy this control C, and go to zero, control V, then it matches. So we can do that, and then we can press E to extrude, and then move the extruded one all the way how we want it. And in this corner, you can see it says E to extrude, S to scale, all the stuff that you might be used to if you used Blender before. S to shrink, uh, S to scale it, and then we can move that up. And so that's how it works. Now, what if you don't like all these textures the way they are? Let's get out of the editing mode and click on this. We have the detail strength here if you don't want the rivets showing up so much. And uh, you note that the riveting is sort of stretched, so you might want to uh, change the scaling. So it seems like two to three is about what we want here right now because of what we've done previously. And then the detail strength here can be reduced. Or you can change the material altogether. So far, there are only a few materials. Uh, carbon, this uh, uh, fabric, glass, well, not for this situation, but sci-fi. You can have a sci-fi material. And I'm sure uh, 
if it's moddable, people can add other materials too. Um, so there's a carbon fiber one. There seems to be some Z fighting, so I must... No, I think I've done something wrong here. But anyway, uh, yep. And then there's a second material down here for the glass, if we had glass. And there's the paint resolution up here. So then you can change the color via normal hue, saturation, and brightness. But let's move on. Uh, we've got lift, the wing. I've, I haven't used these other two, but I've used the wing. And of course, now we want the symmetry there. Oh, did I put these, this in symmetry? That's probably it. Um, let's change the symmetry. Okay, that was probably it. Tab. Let's get two back up here. Oh, well, we've got a partial pink fuselage. Anyway, so pick this up. And now we want the symmetry, slap that on. Uh, it doesn't have the leading and trailing edge. You can add that here, standard and standard. I assume there'll be other options later. And then once you press tab to tweak this, you can tweak the leading edge like that. Or of course the wing itself like that. And it's completely free how you want to tweak it. And you can just shift click to select more than one. There's a horrible wing shape right now, but it's just to get you the picture. So you can just shift click like that. Or I guess maybe control click, no, shift click, definitely shift click. Okay, so then these, yeah, then you get a huge wing like that. So that's how we create wing pieces. And uh, you configure it, you can add a fuel tank like this, and there's actually a variety of fuels which delights me. Avgas, butanol, ethanol, iso-octane, and jet A options. And then the fill amount, and then it tells you how much energy in megajoules, which is fancy. And the priority group is here too. So you've got everything basically. And uh, you can configure the controls separately. When we put the leading and trailing edge, we got um, different control stuff, though that leading edge is a little bit messed up right now. <laughs> let's, I just, just for the sake of sanity, let's just back. Not that the wing is particularly sane right now, but uh, so you've got a single wing piece here, but that's not what we want, right? We want ailerons outside and flaps on the inside or something like that. So we go back to uh, clicking the wing tab, and then there's this option to split the wing. And you can split it where you want the ailerons to be. And now, just like that, after splitting the wing, we click on the wing, and now this is a separate control surface. So then that can be the aileron, and this can be the flap. And so that, that's pretty easy, and you can see it's configured as flap when you can uh, click the configure as. The aileron is configured for roll automatically once you tell it it's an aileron. And of course, we've got the material options that we had with the body. Now to copy this, and you could move this segment separately, I guess, yep. Now control Z to undo would be wonderful. Uh, I'm sure there's a way somehow, but anyway, for now that's one thing I don't know. But we click this, and if you want to duplicate, we can duplicate. Now we've got these, and we can put them back here, and we can scale them. Uh, let's just go into tab mode. Just press A to select all of them, and then press S to scale it. There we go. Um, and then we can move. So we're getting our horizontal stabilizer here. And that that says scale. We don't want to do that. But uh, you can just move things. Get out of the edit mode. And of course we can make the vertical stabilizer the same way, except we will need to change our controls. In this case, it's still split, so maybe duplicating that is not the best idea or duplicate it before you uh, do the split. Uh, so here, rudder, not rudder, sorry, elevator, elevator, and then the vertical stabilizer will be the rudder. And then we've got landing gear as well, and there's a whole bunch of good landing gear options, so let's add part. Uh, I'm not making this a proper plane, I've got the other plane ready to go, so we'll use that. There's engines, uh, actually, at uh, Ramjet even. Uh, if we want the jet engines, we've got jet engines, and it tells you, uh, and this uh, sort of suggests that it's got bigger plans than just being a sandbox, because it's got the cost here of the engines, 
and we've got the bypass ratio. Interestingly, the bypass ratio uh, doesn't scale the front end of it. It just, I guess it uh, reduces the size of the rest of it. Anyway, uh, diameter, and then the weight goes up. What, what it doesn't tell me is the thrust of it. Now, there, are, there doesn't seem to be any presets, so I take it back. Oh, well. So, yeah, there's a little question mark. Number of compressor turbine units in the engine. Oh, whoops. So, yeah, well, there's a lot of stuff here. It's sort of like automation for planes in a way. Uh, it feels like it anyway. Uh, but, yeah, I, uh, on the airplane, I also put a fuselage around the engines because I don't want them bare. And that works just fine, too. But, yeah, anyway, I'm just going to leave those there. It's just a matter of demonstration. And then landing gear is propellers, rotors, and tail rotors. There's the inlets. Though I didn't seem to need the actual inlet for the engines separately uh, with the other engine, but if you want it, I'm not, uh, I, I guess that'd be more sensible if you've got the intakes up front and the engines in the back kind of thing, and not directly on it. So anyway, let me just pick those up and get rid of them for now. So landing gear, and it's even got weapons and various other joints and battery stuff and uh, the makings of, you know, the internals of the cockpit. Uh, I haven't gone into the IVA view as it were, the cockpit view. I suppose that's a thing that's going to happen, but we'll just be flying it from the outside for now. Uh, landing gear, they've got a skid already for your X-15 or something. And we don't want symmetry on the nose gear. I'm just going to do the nose gear for now, and we want to center it, so I'm going to hold down X so it'll, it'll snap to the X at, uh, zero X point. And here we've got... There we go. I was clicking on it and wondering what was going to happen. Okay, so we can reduce the height, increase the diameter of the piston thing. Uh, and then spring and damper, and then the wheel diameter. They have plenty of room for that. And the wheel setup is what changes the configuration of the wheel. And we've got two, one there, one like that, one like that. So not a set of four for an airliner though. So a little bit limited for now. Uh, and then wheel angle, I probably wouldn't touch. Uh, well, I guess if you were to uh, make it like a landing gear, like, like some fighters have, or th there are some planes that have it like that, off to the side and in symmetry. Uh, that mainly, obviously, for the main landing gear, not for the nose gear. So there are options like that, too. Lots of options for building your plane the way you want to and coloring it and apparently there's also decals potentially uh, but i've just started messing around with it so those are the things that i've figured out so far now let me just load the craft that i've made alpha uh, we can see uh, quickly some of the ones that they have there's a ah67 so they've done some fine work on that and then f42 Totally not an F4. <laughs> uh, totally not. Though the outer edges of the wings should be tilted up more. Oh, and what happened? There's no uh, horizontal stabilizers in the back. The classic downward tilting ones are somewhat missing. I wonder how it controls pitch. Anyway, load Griffin. Well, now uh, that is a uh, Eurofighter of some sort. And real Mark II is one of these. Okay, so anyway, just going with the business jet that I made. Very tentatively, not as pretty as theirs, but I didn't do it in as much time. And I should put windows in. But anyway, it was meant to be a Cirrus SR-22, but uh, I, I was... I think the main problem was that my joystick wasn't working. And so the controls for it weren't working the way I wanted for the V-tail, so I've put the vertical stabilizer even though I didn't want it. But, well, let's try it out. Their launch settings, you can start in the air, 
and at a certain speed. But I'm just going to start on the ground and try to take off properly. So the throttle is there. I don't know what this pitch zero, roll zero, and yaw zero are. This little red dot represents our controls. And for some reason it starts in the upper corner. And also this little control diagram doesn't show the the whatchamacallit yaw control. So and I also don't know how to turn like the nose gear. So that's a little bit annoying. I'm trying to turn left using the yaw control here. And that is not working. It's automatically got my flaps down, and I actually don't know how to raise those. Okay, well we've got we've gone off the beaten track here, so let me just restart flight and try and go straight. So trying to fly in this hasn't been so easy. <laughs> uh, again, if my joystick wasn't work, uh, if my joystick was working, it'd probably be easier. And also, if I could control the nose gear, it'd be easier. Here we've got enough air over the, ver uh, the rudder to control it now. Ah, I'm pitching up. There we go. Ah, well, that's interesting. And if I put the gear down again? Takeoff speed was basically what I expected it to be, so that's good. But I wish I could trim. Maybe those are the trims in the corner there, but I don't know how to trim it. It didn't list that in the controls as far as I could tell. But I need a little bit of up trim because it likes to nose down. It's a bit nose heavy right now. I don't know if there's any place in particular to go to. There's basically a, a test thing. A place to test planes right now. Landing gear retraction, I don't know if there's gonna be options for that. Obviously I don't want them clipping into the flap. I was hoping that it would go this way, not backwards. But maybe I could rotate them in and rotate the piston and then it would work out. Shows our fuel consumption, which is nice. I don't know what, what we have here. Oh, there's an autopilot here. Okay, on the altitude 8,000, we're close to that. Heading. Hmm, let's just go with our current heading, shall we? Alright. I, I could just set current. Okay, let's see what the autopilot does. 8,000 I think is pretty good for clearing these mountains anyway. Well that's a relief controls. Oh here's the pitch trim. Let me see if those are trims down there. Okay yes they are. So those are trims. I just don't know how to uh, control the trim using keys yet. Flap zero, we want to go faster. Uh, it's not really holding 8,000. Maybe it's prioritizing the speed instead of the altitude. It should always prioritize the altitude. It seems to be just trying to hold instead of go to 9,000. It is holding the correct heading. Yeah, heading good. Altitude, not good. If I go uh, set the altitude really high, it starts going up though. Flight. Flight data. That's a lot of data. For us, it's highly variable. It doesn't show... Uh, it only shows my controls down here. It doesn't show what the AWPOT's doing with the throttle. Conditions. That's the ambient conditions. Spawn menu. Oh, we can spawn stuff just in case you want to attack a tank with those weapons. 
Okay, well, let's just see how fast we can go. And probably we should go higher up for that. But I don't think we can go past Mach 1. Crashing does happen, by the way. I know this. Crash into the ground. You can crash into the buildings. Also, don't know how big this place is. M does not bring up a map. Nice. It, it seems to have a wind speed indicator in the corner there, which is nice. Uh, oh dear, my engine is actually sort of floating about the body a bit. I should tweak that down somewhat. I'm not going to be getting this back to our uh, base because I have no idea where our base is now. Not a whole lot to see here yet. I wonder what the mobility of the game will be in terms of the scenery, adding scenery to it in particular. Fuel consumption has gone down as we've gone up. We seem to be leveling off here now. Yeah, I don't know about the autopilot and altitude. That's fine with the other two criteria. And we can verify again. There's a little wind turbine there in the middle of nowhere though. That's interesting. So we have some scattered objects potentially. Oh, there's more wind turbines up this valley too. It seems like we're topping out at Mach 0.86, which is reasonable. That's what you would sort of expect. This is actually doing pretty good for a business jet. Among the nice things about this, it actually tells us our expected duration in the corner there. One hour and ten minutes. Hopefully we could have more range than that. I did fill up the wings, obviously. Um, maybe not the most efficient thing. We'll see. Let me tell it to reduce speed and see how efficient we might be able to get. Interesting that the speed here is not the indicated airspeed, but the true airspeed. Normally you'd have the indicated airspeed there. That's important because that's relevant for stalling. Uh, indicated airspeed is how the airframe feels about the situation. Uh, the true airspeed is uh, adjusting for the, dense, the lower density of the air at higher altitudes, for instance. Uh, but the airframe doesn't care about the lower density. Basically, uh, the indicated airspeed will tell you how much air is actually flowing against the body and that's important for stalls and st such. So that's why uh, normally on a HUD you would see the indicated airspeed, not the true airspeed, because you need to know when you're going to stall. The true airspeed is nice for flight planning, but it's secondary to keeping the plane safe. They seem to be able to get a little bit more duration out of it, but not a whole lot. So the range of this is probably something like seven to eight hundred nautical miles maybe if we're lucky so that's not good so far but uh, we have uh, options that I didn't even mention before uh, let me not land this we'll just uh, return to hangar for now I think landing is gonna be a whole other adventure but uh, for instance uh, we have the skin th thickness here so you can see the mass in kilograms here and physics air I guess we can check aerodynamics off so you can actually change the thickness of the body there. One thing you can't do is change it here. And as far as the fun little fuselage editor that we have for this part and our ability to make interesting shapes and even save those interesting shapes like I saved this thin top one, uh, we can't do that, however, with the cockpits. So if I get out of this mode and go here, you can see there is no fuselage editor for the cockpit. And so that's one minor limitation. Of We can still scrunch it in terms of X and Y, but we can't do the fancy fuselage shapes with that. Uh, so that is one limitation. But anyway, this has been a quick look of Flyout. And so it's an early access and there'll be much development, but it's already pretty good in terms of its editor capabilities. And it'll be in an interesting thing to use to test peculiar designs, especially since it seems to have a ramjet. <laughs> uh, I, I want to see if we can make a nice uh, ramjet 
ramjet powered airliner or something. Uh, though I would like the four wheel landing gear for the airliners, but two wheel is fine. There's plenty of airliners with two wheels. So that might be the next adventure with this one. But for now, I'll leave it here as an intro to the game. And I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.